Hello guys and welcome to C Programming Tutorials by Amul's Academy. In the previous tutorial, we discussed about what actually programming language is, history of C and why we need to learn C. And also we learned that C is a compiled middle level language. In short, we can say there will be a programmer who want to give some instruction to the computer. So that instructions are called as program and here programmer will give instruction in the C programming language and C is a middle level language that is it is a human readable language. Computer won't understand middle level language it only understand machine level language. So now we need a program which will convert this middle level language to machine code. So that program is called as compiler. So this compiler will convert this middle level language to machine code. Because of this C is called as compiled language. So this is what we learned in the previous tutorial. And now we can divide this whole process into three parts. That is first one is writing the program. Second one is compiling the program. And third one is executing the program. Our main goal is to learn how to write the programs and also to learn about the basic concepts of C programming language. But we should have some knowledge about the compilation and execution of the program. So in our tutorial, we'll discuss about all of this. So first we'll see how to write the programs in C. Every programming language has its own rules. To write program in that language, we need to follow that rules. C is called as a structured language. That means it has some specific structure to write the program. So if you want to write the program, you need to follow that structure. So today in this tutorial, we'll discuss about the basic structure of C programming language. Okay. And in the basic structure, there are different sections are there. So we'll discuss all of them in detail. Okay, these are the different section in the C programming structure. So here first we can see the documentation section, link section, definition section, global declaration section, main section. In that two part, one is declaration part and execution part. Next last sub program section. All right, we'll discuss these sections in detail. Okay, first section is the documentation section. And this section contains all the information about your program. That is who created this program, when it is created, program name, when it is modified, something like that. But this all informations are commented. That means these instructions are ignored during the compilation process. This is only for the user reference. It won't affect the execution of the program. For example, if you randomly open a program and if you want to know about that program, like who created, when it is created, something like that, then you can see the documentation section. And here I said about the comment. There are two types of comment. One is single line comment. If we see this symbol, this is the single line comment. Here it will contain text. If you see this symbol at the beginning of your sentence, then it is treated as a comment. Okay. This is the single line comment. Next is multi line comment. That is something. Okay. This is the multi line comment and here you can include text. This is the beginning of comment and this is the end of the comment. This is about the documentation section which contains all the information about the program but it is useful for the user. Next section is link section. And here in the link section you can include header files or system library files. That is in our program, we'll use some functions which are already defined in the system library. So you may think now what is function? What is system library? We'll discuss about this function concepts in the upcoming tutorials. But for now, just remember that 
functions is the number of statements which are grouped together to do some particular task okay so we'll take one example in your college or university your professor will do project groups right in your group there will be four to five members or more okay this think that this is your project group take this members as instructions okay so this is the group of instruction and this group is called as function and here all the members do same task right that is doing project here these are the members who group together to do some particular task that is project here if you take this member as instruction then this group is called as function all right and in the function there will be two types one is called as library function and another one is called as user defined function okay first is library function library function is nothing but the functions which are already defined in the system library to use this functions we just need to mention the name of the function that's it okay so we'll take one example imagine that you want to eat chocolate cake so what will you do you'll go to a shop and you'll buy chocolate cake and you'll eat right here in the shop cake is already prepared here what you did is you just went to the shop and buy the chocolate cake and you ate that so here if you take this shop as the system library and this chocolate cake as your function and here you are the programmer so in your program you want to use a function which is already defined in the system library so what will you do you will just use the name of the function in your program to get chocolate cake you need to pay money right so in the same way to use the function which are already defined in system library we just need to mention the name of that header file or the name of that library file in our program so that can be done in the link section okay this is about the library function that is already function will be defined in the system library we are just using that function by mentioning that name second one is user defined that is in c you can define your own function that functions are called as user defined function that is here if you want to eat chocolate cake what will you do is you will prepare cake by yourself and you'll eat that so this is called as user defined functions you'll create your own functions okay so here we are talking about the link section where you can include header files or system library files okay if we take an example for link section you can mention something like this it is a standard input output header file this file is useful for input and output function all right so this is just an example okay this is about the link section okay next is definition section here you can define the symbolic constant for example if you want to use uh, pi constant in your program that is 3.14159 that is pi value is 3.14159 if you want to use this number again and again in your program instead of writing this number you can give some name to this constant and you can use that for example here we can give name as pi and value is 3.14159 and the syntax will be hash define here we need to mention the name in the upper case letter for example pi and here we need to mention the value that is that is 3.14159 something like that okay 
so this is about the definition section okay next will be global declaration section that is here you can mention global variables so now question is what is variable and what is global variable here variable is nothing but the name given to some value for example in math you will take x equal to 5 right here x is a variable which will hold the value 5 so in the same case here in the c variable is nothing but the name given to some value or data and global variables are nothing but these are the variables which are needed for more than one function for example uh, take c programming language book which is written by a b c author so i can read this book even my friend can read this book even you can read this book your friend can read this book right this book can be read by all of us global variables are something like this that variables can be used by more than one function so if any global variables are needed in your program then you can declare in the global declaration section here you can also declare user defined function we talked about the user defined function right that is if you are using user defined function in your program then you can declare it here global variables and user defined function declaration can be done in the global declaration section okay this is about the global declaration section okay next section will be main function section every c program must contain one main function and here there are two parts one is declaration part and another is execution part and in the declaration part you can declare local variables that is the variable needed for this function okay we talked about the global variable right now we'll see what is local variable for global variable i took the example of c programming book now example for local variable is your personal diary you won't allow me to read your personal diary right only you can read your diary local variables are something like that only the function where local variable is declared only that function can use that variable okay that is about the declaration part and here next is execution part here execution part at least contains one statement come on yeah this is execution part it should contain some statement if it doesn't contain any statement then what will you execute right so this is about the main function section okay next is the sub program section that is if you are using any user defined function then you need to define it here in this section okay your program can contain more than one user defined function that is um, for user defined function we took the example of chocolate cake that is you are making chocolate cake by yourself so if you are making your chocolate cake in the global declaration part you need to declare that and here in the sub program section you need to define that that is you need to tell how you are making your chocolate cake okay so this is something like that all right these are all these sections in the c programming structure now you may ask writing programs in c must be lengthy if you have that confusion then no here some sections are optional your program may contain some section and it may miss some section so there is no rule that your program must contains all the section but here this section should be in this order only you can't mix the order that is first i'll write global declaration part next i'll write sub program section part next i'll write definition part next i'll write link you can't do this so you may have some confusion regarding this topic then don't worry in the next tutorial i'll take a programming example which contains all the section and i'll explain all the section in detail so that's it for now thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe my channel i'll meet you in next class till then take care